it's impolite to sniffle if you have a runny nose you you just have to blow it they'll give you a tissue they'll be like oh here take this like get it out because it just doesn't make sense to them to try to keep it in if it's trying to come out it's just like get it out and so you'll be in meetings and who knows where and they oh they blow their noses so well so loud so I got really good at that too so you'd better get get used to that don't feel self-conscious about blowing your nose and hungry because everybody does it another thing is that they're more cautious or more concerned about freezing about getting cold or getting sick from being cold so they don't put ice in their water they never have ice water and there's a bit of logic to it as I came to know it's just like your body's already trying to keep warm as it is like the organs are trying to work so as you're putting that ice water in, it just kind of freezes things up so in the end I can see the logic and why they don't don't drink ice water when it's cold outside especially in the winter you don't sit down on any of the benches you it's not acceptable or like you can you're not going to go to prison for it or anything, but but all the little old nannies and batchies, the old men and old women, they'll they'll come up to you and tell you like, don't sit there. You're not going to have children. So it was interesting. This family, they wanted to cook a meal for us, and instead of just like you know here where you would just like either put it in the oven or cook on a stove or whatever, they actually went out in their yard and built a fire and had this big cauldron that they hooked up with like this stand and this chain and it was just hanging over this fire and it was just really neat I was like oh my goodness so that's not something you would typically see you would not see that in the big city but in this small village it was it was just so chill it was so normal to do that it's like yeah we're just gonna cook over this fire in this big cauldron thing and it was fun I was like that's so cool and I think the best um, Hungarian food I ever had was fruit soup and you think of fruit soup and it's kind of like mm, fruit soup that doesn't really work right and that's what I, that's the exact same thing I thought too fruit soup that doesn't really go together it's not like peanut butter and jelly you know it's not like chips and salsa it's fruit and soup and so uh, this nanny just gave it to us and she was like hey you know here, here it is it looked delicious it was like a pink purple color it just was glowing and I was like wow this is what fruit soup is she said do you like it hot or cold I was like um oh, I could try it hot and she looked at me she's like no I think I think you would like it cold I was like all right so she gave it to me and first bite I just fell in love absolutely just drop down to the ground and just almost started worshiping the soup it was so good <laughs> um, and it's really easy to make um, I mean go online look it up um, but it's delicious it's really good and that's that's something that's very very unique to Hungary is the fruit soup so if you go to Hungary try the fruit soup it's really good you won't be let down the, uh, bad foods there's a uh, sausage they have different uh, tons of different kinds of sausage there they have a uh, horse sausage they have pig sausage chicken sausage all kinds but there's one particular sausage that I just despised I guess that's a good word. <laughs> hated I don't know it was really really bad uh, first of all it looks black it's like a black sausage they call it hurka that's the name for it and it was served to me um, from a gypsy family um, and gypsies cook really really good food by the way so I mean this isn't this is just something that all Hungarians eat this isn't just gypsies and uh, I just tried it and I thought it was the most disgusting thing and you ask anybody that knows me I I am very brave when it comes to food I can eat anything um, but this hurka stuff I just could not I could not shove it down in my throat um, so what it is it's blood sausage and so I, I mean they take every single part of the pig I guess it's what sausage is anyways um, but they it's just oh just the way that they cook it and like put it together you like when you eat it you can you know like kind of start picking little pieces of bones out of your teeth because it's just gross um, but they love it that's something that's really really unique to Hungary as well as a horka so if you want to try something unique <laughs> try that a lot of Hungarians love it um, but me no like no thanks I didn't I didn't really like it very much there was one time I'd only been in the country for a couple of weeks and I'd heard about this dish because they also usually have it around the holidays and it is called Kortornia and it is this pig fat jello dish and they brought it out and I looked at it and I just thought what is that and then I thought oh no this is that pig fat gel that I'd been hearing about and what it is is it's this like clear gelatin kind of salty gelatin like substance and in 
in it are just these hunks of meat, but it's not the kind of meat that you would want to eat. Like there was a hoof in it, or there was like part of an ear, and then it had the this like paprika, the the pepper kind of paprika seasoning type thing over it. And I took a bite. So he served me up a portion and I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to have to do this. And so I took a little bite of the jello and I just thought, I, I can't, there's no way I can do this. <laughs> and luckily they were super sweet and understanding and they thought, oh, you know, you probably won't like this, but it's my favorite. So I'll eat it. He said, oh, just, just try the meat. And I was looking at this hunk of meat in the middle of this gelatin. And it was, I think like part of the hoof or something. And I just thought, I can't do it. Like that one little bite of the gelatin was enough. And so I just told him, you know, thank you. Thank you. I, you know, and he's like, oh, it's okay, I'll eat it. It's my favorite. And so luckily it wasn't a bad experience, you know, but I did try the, the big fat jello. But other than that, everything that I had was just delicious. The toilets are so different. <laughs> like, <laughs> this might sound kind of funny, but here in America, we have these like big dishes filled with water. Over there, they either have like a platform that, <laughs> that you have to go to the bathroom on and then like the hole or some of them do have more of a bowl shape like we do here, but it's not as full with water. Easter's a really wild time there. Uh, they have this tradition where the girls have to have these painted eggs that they give to the boys. And if you're going super traditional, then the boys either like squirt them with water or like dump water on the girls. If you're going more modern, then you spray them with perfume. Um, but the buckets of water is much more fun and uh, we experienced that a little bit. I'm not sure where that tradition came from. There's a lot of, they also um, use a lot of poetry uh, involved in that. So they'll say little poems to the girls before the girls give them eggs and they then the boys dump water on them. Hungarians uh, do really cool whip tricks. They, they have, that's like a, an interesting thing they do is they, they tame um, animals with these crazy whips and stuff, and so you get to see those and buy those. I have a whip, learned how to whip in Hungary. That's always fun. There are thermal bath houses um, that you have to go to. There's gonna be a lot of old men in Speedos. There's gonna be a lot of like little kids just running around um, naked because that's how they do it in Hungary. I got to go there with my wife when we went back to Hungary, and it's just like super fun. And also it was in the early spring but still kind of winter time and so it was really warm and happy so that's a good place to go. I was in Yedichaza so it's up north super cold and we had been outside for hours like probably five hours and it was a blizzard okay freezing snowing my boots were wet I was wearing three pairs of tights two pairs of socks but they were completely soaked through and my feet were so cold and so I like told my companion like, hey, maybe we should go home. My feet are kind of hurting and they were hurting more than usual. And when we got home, I took off all of my socks and my tights and my toes were black. And I was so scared because I thought that I had frostbite. So I went to a hospital and it turns out that I had frostbite on three of my toes from standing in this winter blizzard in Hungary for hours. So it took um, a couple of months for me to be able to recover from that. They usually have one to two children and they'll often give them the name of the parent. So you'll have a Mary and then a baby Mary or a John and a baby John or, or a Michael. Mihai and a baby Mishi. And so that was kind of cool. Um, Hungary actually used to have a rule that, that you had to name your children from a list of names that, that you couldn't deviate from that list. And so because of that, there's a lot of the same common names. But at the same time, they also have a name day. So just as big as your birthday is this name day celebration where um, all throughout the year, you have a specific day that celebrates your name. So, for example, Michael would have a day throughout the year that you'd have, that you'd celebrate your, your name and, and getting it. And that's something that a lot of the Hungarians like. They have, they have greeting cards that focus on name days. Sometimes they'll throw a little party. Um, I was really excited because my name actually was on the name day list, or the name list. So I have a name day too, which is cool. The longest word in Hungarian, because you can make 
a noun into a verb and a verb into a noun and then tack on things and then make that into a verb and, um, and so on and so forth. Words can get really long. I don't really use this word because the context just has to be right. But the longest word that I know in Hungarian is <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Um, but it means for all of your sanctifiableness, which would be kind of hard to use in a conversation, but it's technically a word. One of their big industries is sunflower oil. And so there will just be fields and fields of sunflowers as far as you can see. They eat a lot of poppy seed and export it as well. And so you'll see fields of red poppies 